Dave here, how are you? You may see I've got a little bit of a mess on my assembly table. It's there on purpose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on building this assembly table, but underneath. The top was always finished, so I can put pieces of large section of timber or plywood through my table saw with ease on my own. But underneath, I was waiting for some inspiration to hit me as to what I wanted to do with the cabinets. Now I'm going to do some drawers in this cabinet here. Now these drawers I'm going to do thin drawers at the top and the bottom drawers will be a bit deeper. Why have thin drawers? Because these things tend to get lost quite easily in a drawer that's even four or five inches deep. So that's the whole thing behind this. I will also probably try and get my Bessie clamps in one of these drawers as well. And as an interesting twist, I'm going to make the, all of the drawer fronts act as a 96 millimeter regular 20 millimeter diameter dog hold pattern. So it'll be quite nice. I'll make some nice plied drawer fronts out of this kind of stuff here. I've also got an interesting twist as we're going to go along. So keep watching. At this one, you may pick up some very, very handy ideas. Here we go. This is the inside dimensions of the carcass that I have under this bench. I want to fit various items that I have up here in there. I have to make allowance for the size of these drawer glides. I have to make allowance for the layout that I'm going to utilize as the drawer faces or the drawer fronts. These little squiggly lines here represent the half inch that I have to allow for the drawer glides either side. This is my dog hole pattern at 96 millimeter centers. Now I want to make sure that it works pretty well and I need to know the distance between the drawers that I'm going to get using this as my governing factor. You can see it gets messy down here but it'll be fine. Now this here, this is the drawer itself that I'll be making. So this is the internal dimension and the internal dimension. This is allowing for 16 millimeters which is close enough to 5 eighths of an inch. Overall dimension, which is less than the carcass in depth. This is my cutting list. The name of the part of the drawer that I'm using, so the base, the sides, front and rear, and the count, how many there are of each, and the length, the width, and edging. So this is pretty easy to understand here. But the edging, you may, under, may not know what this means. It says E1L, which means edge one long length. So in that situation, that's the base. I'm going to say, no, we're not going to edge. So I've picked up a mistake already. The sides, which are these two units here, edge one long. So that will be the top section of this one will be edged with iron-on tape. So will that one. There'll be nothing underneath and nothing at either end. It doesn't need to have any tape on it. Now you have to be aware that every time you put one of these pieces of tape, they're a millimeter thick, so it's going to make your unit grow in part. So you have to allow for that in your dimensions. If I was to put a draw front on here, I would have E2L2S. Now the S would be for the short length up the sides of the draw front, and the L would be for the long sides or the long edge. Once I've got the cutting list done, the next thing to do is to do a sheet layout. And I found that I could get all four drawers out of one sheet only if I needed to. So what I've got here is I've decided that I would cut the sheet down the center. I needed 588 is one of my dimensions here. There it is right there. And seeing these sheets are 1200 wide, that is 12 millimeters less, which will allow for the kerf of the saw blade down the middle between the, to split the sheet. And also, it will allow for me to trim off the edge. Now, I try to clean the edge of a sheet off prior to using it because you've no idea whether it's been damaged or whether that is straight or not. They should be pretty good, but you know, they can get damaged. So I like to cut my own clean edge. Now you might wonder what all these numbers along here are. This is my running total approximately giving me some allowance for kerf and a little bit of mucking around. So 409, 830, 1250, 1660, 2100, leaving me 300 there. So I've got my one, two, three, four bases 
two bases for the top two drawers, two bases for the bottom two drawers, and they're all the same size. So there's all my bases, and I tick them as I go along, so I know where I'm at. Then these are the front and, and rear for one, the bottom. Two, three, four, and they will come out at the end of that sheet. Now that might be a bit boring by telling you all of that, but it just shows that if you can lay out the job on a piece of paper, and it won't be my first layout, you can see I've made mistakes over there, and you can have a couple of goes at trying to get them all on there with the best cutting for that sheet. Next thing to do is to actually get started. No dust, and they're all done. Good fun, isn't it? Now what we're going to do now is I'm going to assemble one of the drawers. Now I build a drawer in a very basic manner. I build a drawer by the base to start. I do it back to front to most people. I cut a very substantial base out of 5 eighths of an inch, three, oh, sorry, 16 millimeter thick melamine. Now the reason I do this is because I do not like the bottoms of my drawers deflecting and bowing and falling out, which is what happens a lot of the time with masonite or plywood. So the end and the front of my drawer are exactly the same width as the base of the drawer. My either side are the length plus two thicknesses of material, which is the same as the front and the back. Now you'll notice I pocket hold all of the underside of this section. Now sometimes when you pocket hole there's going to be a little bit of waste comes out on the edge there and it's going to hold your pieces away from each other. So I get I get one of the pieces that's going to marry up and I, I run it down the side to cut little bits away. We don't want anything fouling the joint to hold it open so that's why I run the side along like that. So to do it it's very very easy as I say I've pocket holed everything ready to go. So we've got the pocket holes in the front and the back and the pocket holes in the underside. I bring the whole drawer unit over near the edge of the bench. I put the front and the back on so you'll know from inside the drawer you're not going to see any pocket holes. This will be buried in the cabinet. The front of the drawer will have another drawer front over the top hiding all of that as well. So then we put that on there, that on there, and you might say, well, you know, how are we going to make it all work? Well, there's a trick. This is a very, very easy way to do it. And I don't know why everyone doesn't do it. I use my clamps, and whilst everything's sitting down flat, I'll put the clamp on, and you can see this is why I have I'm on the edge of the bench and I'm not going to tighten it up much just a little bit just to hold it and I'll put one on the end here as well not right up hard against the unit but near the end 
And you're probably going to say, Dave, look at this, look at this, this is terrible, you can't have that. Well, you can, there's a trick to it. So a little bit of a nip, and now I'm going to turn it upside down. And I have the bottom, the base of the drawer, sitting flush with both ends, and with there and there. There's a bit of a belly there, but I'm not concerned about that yet. Next thing I'm going to do, get another couple of clamps. And I'm going to tip these guys over flat. One of the great things about these clamps, I love them. Right up hard against the end. You can you see it there. I'll bring it back a little. So that clamp is pushing against this clamp, this clamp, this end of the clamp is pushing against there. And I'll turn it around a little bit so you can see what happens. I should really be wearing the um, action cam, but I haven't got it on at the moment. And I'm going to tighten this up. And I can give that one to it. And now that, my friend, has pulled it up perfectly. It's all nice and straight. I am seeing a little bit of a dip there, and I knew I would because as I put the pressure on, I'm starting to deflect that base. It's going to be fine. We'll put a clamp across there a little bit later on. So I'll do it the same on the other side. Tighten her up, and again, we'll see that close up nicely. And there. Now I can tighten these. Great little system. There we go. So I can now screw those, and we're set to number four on the clutch. And they're one inch coarse washer heads. Done. How easy. I love it. So easy. And these are extremely strong. These drawers are very, very strong. You might say, oh, it's only particle board. It should be plywood. Well, it's your call. Whatever you want to use. I like using melamine. Now, you notice then I just pulled my finger away as I was doing that because I don't, if the screw actually starts to bite in, I don't want my finger to have the screw buried into it. That would hurt. I'll get a couple of screws in near the end and that'll hold the sides straight so it doesn't slide and then I can take the clamps off. It makes no difference now because it's all locked. The screws are holding it all in position. And then I can put this across the center and tighten her up. And then what I'll do is I'll get a mallet and I'll just give this a bit of a tap. Beautiful. And I can release these and I can turn them up sideways now and tighten them that way. That is so good. And then I can release this one, turn it up that way, back to there. Yes, tighten him up, flip him over, like so. And then I'm going to just nip that up again with one of these other clamps. <laughs> So it's just on it. Beautiful. That's pulling that up beautifully. I can put these screws in here. Yes. And this one. There you go. Now, that, I'll drop down a little bit so you can see it. That has come up very, very nicely. All around the bottom, it's pulled in tight. And then inside the drawer, very, very nice. Now I've got to make a couple more. This is a King Slice 600mm full extension soft close. 
So at the moment I've pulled it out, you can see it here, and then when I bring it back to here, it does this soft closing. See, no magic, no mirrors, it's just bloody nice. So you pull it all the way out, and on the back here, you'll see there's a little clip. I don't know if I can show this. There we go, that's a little clip there. We pull that lever up, and it undoes it, and I can pull that out. This is going to get screwed to the drawer. I'll pop that out of the way, and then I can put a packer in. So this is a bit of 16 millimeter. That's pretty easy so far, isn't it? I'm now going to put this in line with the front of the carcass there. You can see it here. Now when I've got it there, I'm going to use this little guy. Now this is called a Vix bit. See this? As I drill, the tip's going to come out, but it's going to center itself in the hole. So I'm going to duck down here and have a bit of a look, see if I can find the first of the large holes. There we go. Now it's drilled a little hole. This is easy. It's a lot easier if you do this before you actually build the cabinet, but I didn't know what I was going to do with this yet. So that's why I'm doing it. I'm using a four millimeter drill and I'm going to just open those holes up. I'm only going to go in a very shallow distance. Now the screws I'm using are these little guys. These are what's called a European screw. And that's got a five, it's a five millimeter screw and but very shallow in depth. Very coarse. It really doesn't matter where you put these slides. They can be halfway up the side of the drawer, near the bottom of the drawer. It doesn't really make that much difference. I prefer to go near the base of the drawer. So this still is not having any effect on where my drawer is going to go. It's, it's just having an effect on where I'm placing this in the carcass. So I'm going to put that back in line with the front. Now that I have that hole drilled in the right position, I can now put one of these screws in. Let's see how we go here. Now I've got the clutch on my CXS set to number five. Now why have I drilled those two and put those screws in straight away? There's two more to go in. It's just that I wanted to position this slide so it didn't move around if I bumped it in between drilling the other screw holes. So now that it's in there, I will use the this little guy again. The fixed bit. And I'll slide this along until I expose one of the other holes here. There it is. Done. Drill the hole. I can take that out. That doesn't need to be there anymore. And open the hole up. There we go. Done. And... Done. Try and clean everything off the slide. You don't want it caught in the mechanism. So I might hit it with a brush in a minute too. So then I'll put the screw in. A couple of screws last to, to go. Done. And the last one. And as I say, these things are designed to take 32 kilos. And I think that is 16 kilos per side. Brilliant. Lightweight or medium weight duty these things. Now we need to put this bad boy back in before it will do the full retraction. Watch. I get a kick every time it does it. I love it. I love it. I love it. There we go. So that's that stage. From the face of this universal rail, to the front of the rebate here is 28 millimeters. My draw fronts are 16 millimeters thick. They're not actually going to be coming back and touching that, but I do want them to be in line on this vertical plane. So what I'm going to do is that distance total is 28 millimeters minus 16 gives me 12 millimeters to the face of that. So I need my drawers to sit proud of this unit, the edge there, by 12 millimeters, which seems a bit strange, but believe me, it'll work.
Now what I've done is I've put a quarter inch thick piece of ply. I've pulled the slides out a little bit. I've got the support sitting out proud of the cabinet. I need to have the front of that in line with this mark on the front of the drawer. So let's drop the drawer in there. And I don't want it coming out too far. I'll move this back until the slide is in line with my pencil mark. And you can see there, it is in line with the pencil mark. Now, because everything is sitting down nicely, I can now put a screw in there. Now, I'll do a small hole with the Vix bit. Done. Now, these are a 5 8 by 5 gauge screw. Now, I'm going to slide around to the other side and put a screw in there. Then the drawer's locked, and as I'll slide the drawer out, it's being supported by the drawer glide, and it will be held at the right height. They're very easy to do. Make sure we've got clearance. Yep, beautiful. going to do now is go to the other side and put another couple in so that we don't have a twist. If I lift those, pull the drawer out like so. When you go like this, it releases this little catch here and lets me pull the drawer out. I can now confidently put those last screws in. Slide them in and all the way back home. Now remember, I'm sitting proud. I nearly said, why hasn't it gone all the way in? I love it. You watch this. Full extension. And then back. Watch that. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. Now I've got to do some more. I've got three more drawers to go in here at 20 millimeters apart for it to work the dog hole pattern for me nicely. So we'll do that next. I'll knock myself up a couple little bits of 20 millimeter packer. Put a packer down on the floor. This panel of plywood is going to be all of the drawer fronts and it's also going to be dog hold so I can utilize dogs on all of these drawers. Now that might sound a bit weird but we're even going to go one step past that. I'm going to put a blue Craig T-Track right the way down here as well. Now this is all going to be very very easy to do and <laughs> It's, believe me, it'll work well. Anyway, so I've packed that. So this guy here is going to sit approximately there. There's a still a little bit of a warp in the board at the moment, and that will disappear. I'll let it set. But this distance out is in line with this mag switch universal rail.
A smarter thing would have been to put the blue tape on first before I put it over the router table. Because <laughs> that would have cut the edge of the tape to exactly the same spot that I wanted. I love these glue brushes. Now you notice this track has got little glue slots in it. And they're there for a purpose. So we can drop this one in now. No need for clamping. And I shall now pull the tape up as well. Done a reasonable job. I'll be painting it. Oh, sorry. I'll be sanding it as well, but it's done a reasonable job of holding the, the glue out. We will spin this around here. And we'll put this one in here, like so. There it is. Gotcha. Should be one more pin. There it is. So three, and we go one, two, three, four. That will line up with that, like that. Why did I drill all of these little holes here? Why didn't I go all the way through? Well, the thing is, I'm going to put this panel on as one panel, and then I'm going to cut 
all of the drawer fronts off the drawers, but I think that's going to look quite nice. Gotcha. How good is that? Straight away. Now I can rotate this side to where it needs to go. Just checking the, the gap down the side again. Gotcha. How's that all looking? Beautiful and beautiful down there. Now I can put a heap of screws in there because that's going to lock it. As I say, see there's, there's the top drawer holding onto it. And it's only just punched through the inside. Now the holes for the dogs are also going to go right the way through. So punching out the other side is going to work very well for me. Watch this. How cool is that? Beautiful. All right, let's do the rest. And that's under the surface there, which is great. That's what I, that's what I was after. I wanted it under the surface. Now, why am I doing the lot? Because this is going to act as my three millimeter pilot drill through the melamine front of the drawer. These are going to be the drawer fronts, not the front of the drawer. It's a slightly different thing. Oh, that's a nice look. Looks like some old Saxon armour. Plywood. <laughs> I put a clamp on the second drawer down so I can't this whole unit can't push back in whilst I'm cutting. I've also cut some wedges on the bandsaw just then to put into the cut so that any load dropping down won't act as a jam. Even though the TS-55 has got a riving knife behind it, it's also a good idea to support this further out. So it'll, that'll all happen as the cut progresses. So first thing to do, is slide this up. Now I have put a mark there already as to where everything's going to go and I'll get my clutch pencil and put a little line there and do the same on the other side over here. Now that is going to be the bottom side of my cut. I'll also be going above that so I had to make allowance so that I'm not cutting into the underside of the drawer. So I've come down about four millimeters below the height or below the bottom of this drawer. But there's nowhere around the back here for me to clamp onto. So I'm going to use the FS Rapid clamp, which is this guy here. And it's just a matter of slide that along to wherever I want. Rotate that out. Did you know that this will rotate over if you've got one of these? And we'll slide it on. And hopefully I can get it in there. I'll lock this in position, like so. Pop that on, down to where I need to be. Now, the saw, I've set, I've set the depth of the saw so that the plunge will accommodate everything. We'll do a bit of a cut with the aluminium blade. I will also use the splinter guard on the back, this little guy here. I'll slide down into position straight off. That's him there. So that that will protect the fibers on the waist side of the cut. Let's see how we go. I'll plug her all in. And a wedge in behind it so it doesn't drop on it. Pull the bat saw slightly back.
see this see this smile it worked I love it my drawers are separated from each other and now I want to clean the face up put screws in from behind remove all of these screws at the front here drill through and drill through as well now you can do this and just say oh yeah that's easy but I've done it a couple of times and I'm, I'm going to show you the way that actually worked for me because I did have a mistake and I'll show you what happened there's a little picture here we had a bit of tear out I raised the drill up and I pushed it back down unwittingly now I've got a little bit of furring up because my splinter guard wasn't set correctly so I'm going to raise this up with my sandpaper this is 180 grit paper now I can do a little bit more and as I say it's a good idea to raise up because we're running on end grain okay the sides same thing I am going to give it a slight touch across the front even though my saw blade left a beautiful cut I will do it a little bit and I'm also going to go along the inside here just a little without pushing my sandpaper down onto the melamine edge there now why are we doing the insides because you're putting your hand inside the drawer and pulling things out you don't want to catch now we're going to do some wax on it and on the edge just going to use 800 velis festival velis brings it up pretty quickly what I'm using on my bench is a router mat now you can get these as a specialized thing from stores or you, know, or you can get them from supermarkets as a, um, a draw liner you know same kind of thing we need to put some holes on the inside there's a tip watch out you don't go through where the aluminium track is because that would end in tears come back a little bit from it one I'm just going to put three across and up here the distance down that I'm going is governed by how close in my drill body can get to the base of the drawer One. three now I can remove these screws at the front done now we can put the three millimeter drill back down through those holes the screw has been cutting and we want this hole to be as accurate as possible so I'll pop that in there beautiful beautiful now I'm going to need to put the force a bit back in the jig and I'll put it there and I want it to go in but not all of the way I want it to come to about there I want it to finish three mil shy of coming through the other side because I don't want tear out on the back on the melamine on the inside of the drawer there I'll use the depth stop this guy here and line it up so we can see where we're going and so now I'm going to stand the drawer upside down or on its on its end on the floor the drill will go down through until it gets to the melamine on the front of the drawer so I'm going through the drawer front the drawer front the front of the drawer they sound a bit weird but you know that's that's the terminology this is the drawer front 
the front of the drawer is on the other side. So as I go down and the cutter cuts a little disc at the end and it starts to spin and it can't cut through it. These side cutters here underneath can't pick it up. So it will spin and the drill can't go any further. So you have to, I use a small Allen key that came with the, the drill that puts the collar on. I free that little disc up and suck it out with a vacuum cleaner, then I can keep going down. You might notice down in that hole, I have not gone all the way through. The melamine is still fine on the other side. I have the three millimeter hole in the center there, ready for me to come in from the other side to drill. Of course, I can't use the path guide system inside the drawer in this particular situation because it is too space restricted. I need to take it off the system and I'm just going to use the 20 millimeter Forstner bit instead. Gotcha. One hole. All I'm doing is cutting out the disc at the end. Beautiful. With a through hole countersink, they normally go in quite quickly to a certain depth and then stop because of the design. See that, that hole does not go all the way out to the lip. So it will kind of stop itself when it needs to. That's a decent chamfer. I'm gonna do it on the back as well, at a bit of an angle. And the advantage of this here is that I can actually get it in there. Now they're going to be my handles as well. Now this drawer is numbered number three. Notice I've numbered all the drawers. So as I'm putting them back in, I know where I'm up to. There we go. Yep, a bit of dust in there, probably. Oh, that's nice. And that can go in there. Or oh, can it go all the way? Yes. I'm going to finish them off and uh, then we'll say goodbye. <laughs> so I'll take, throw some photos well, as I'm finishing off of how it's come up and it looks lovely and it's going to work a treat. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy what I'm doing, you know the routine. Click the subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you think it's worth it. And I shall and share. Share with your friends. Keep on coming back. I shall see you next time.